Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and you'd like to see it get put together live, send me a message today. Alright, so tonight we've got, got a little bit of stuff on. We've got a, a new PC build here, which is this rig you see in front of you right now in pieces. Um, and then we've got a PC to diagnose as well. So basically we're going to get this one assembled and we'll start the stress test on it. And then we'll diagnose the second one. And then once we work out what's going on with that, we'll check in and see how the stress test has been going on the first one. And then that's pretty much our itinerary for the night. So first up we're going to be building Liam's PC so Liam's got a very cool dad who's organized um, this PC for him so we'll go through the components here and we'll get started so we've got an i9 12900k CPU is or is this a is it KF or a K it's KF so what's the difference between K and KF I'll just tell you quickly one has onboard graphics and the other does not so if you're putting in a high-end graphics card, it usually doesn't make sense to, to have the, um, the onboard graphics on the CPU. So don't, don't spend extra on it is normally the rationale with regards to that. For our motherboard, we've got an MSI Pro Z790-P Wi-Fi motherboard. We'll have a look at that in a bit more detail soon. We've got a one terabyte NVMe SSD, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, one terabyte hard drive, an RTX 4070, it's a MSI Ventus 3X. And for our power supply here, we've got a Thermaltake GF3 power supply. So that's got the PCIe 5 or ATX3 or 12 plus 4 pin, whatever you want to call it, the new connector on the 40 series. So we don't have to use any adapters or anything like that. We're going to be putting it in the Antec D700 Flux. If you're thinking this looks like a fairly similar case to that um, Antec case from the other night, you would be correct. This is the exact same chassis with a different front panel on it. So instead of the one that you saw last night, this is the this is the full mesh one that's got this like wave effect in the front of it. So that's just like um, yeah, that's just a, a, a metallic mesh on the front of it and just like the other one it's got the three pre-installed rgb fans there in the front up the top there we've got a deep cool ls720 cooler um it's a really good quality cooler they come with a five-year warranty what's wrong oh stop spinning that because every time you spin it a little bit too far my way that white thing's really white and it like blurs everything out yeah stop that Leave it there. <laughs> it's annoying. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting in trouble. Yes, you are. She gets, she gets the shits really easily, eh? <laughs> she literally just threw a fucking ponytail thing at me. <laughs> ponytail thing? You mean a hair tie? Hair tie, whatever. Who's with me? <laughs> ponytail thing. That'll do. Remember, my audience is like 90% male. And I'm not saying that there's anything anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that in general, when I'm talking, I'm talking to like other dudes. Yeah. Hey, Fiona, how are you going? Good to have you with us. My ears lowered. Oh yes, yes. I haven't heard that one for a while. <laughs> so we'll have a look at this board here. So this is the MSI Z790 Pro Dash P motherboard, or Pro Z790 Dash P. Yeah, great names. That's the Wi-Fi version of that as well. I'll go around and I'll point out the main features on this board. So we've got two 8-pin CPU power connectors there up the top. We've got one, two, three fan headers, an RGB header, four, five fan headers. 
We've got number six down there and seven eight at the bottom so four um eight fan headers on this motherboard which is nice to see obviously our lga 1700 socket there got nice direct touch heat sinks on the mosfet vrn co-processors we've got a total of one two three four m2 slots we've got dual channel memory four slots two channels obviously our motherboard power there got USB 3. We've actually got two USB 3 headers on this motherboard so if you've got a big case that has the two you can make use of both of them if you want. You've got USB uh, type C header, six SATA ports there, we've got our front panels, two USB 2s and we've got our PCIe X16, two X4 slots and a, a single X1. So these slots here might look the same length as this top one, but they're only connected four of the way along, or one quarter of the way along. This is called an X16 slot at the top here, and these ones at the bottom are only connected about a quarter of the way along. So sometimes when you look really, really, really closely, you can see the, the pins inside the socket shining there in the light. See how it's connected. It only goes about a quarter of the way along, or less. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about there. Obviously our audio down the bottom there. At the back here for our rear I.O. Audio, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1. We've got 2.5 gigabit LAN, and two, four, six, eight USB ports, including one Type-C, and four uh, USB 2s. We've also got the HDMI and DisplayPort output there on the motherboard. Neither of them will be in use because we don't have onboard graphics on the CPU. Out some stickers for that. Yeah, definitely. And the PS2 port there as well for old school keyboards or mice or really, really high-end keyboards. So that's the main features there of this motherboard. So definitely, definitely got plenty of um, plenty of features there. You shouldn't really run into too much of a drama with this motherboard. Okay, so we've got our Intel 12900KF going in here. So one thing, one thing about this is when you have, when you install a 12900K or a 13900K, you can pretty much guarantee that it's tuned for gaming. And as a result, it's, it gets really, really hot if you use all cores and all threads at the same time. So if you don't tune it for what you're using it for, doesn't matter what sort of cooling you have, even if you have a custom loop, it'll still overheat and cause you problems. So, yeah. Just your sense if you're a gamer, Wi-Fi is waste time. Yeah, but you shouldn't have too much of a problem with the Wi-Fi 6 module. It depends on your internet in the area, but like for the most part, a lot of people game on Wi-Fi 6 these days, just because it's all that's available. And, and it can vary by area, what and and also the technology on your end, like what sort of router you've got, etc. But yeah, for best experience, it's always Ethernet. You really can't go wrong with that. But, yeah, like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people, that's their only option. So, it's important that they keep making better and better routers and better Wi-Fi standards that allow for, you know, higher, higher capacity and stuff and are more reliable. I think we're at the point now where people don't really care about it getting much faster, they just want it to be more reliable. Yeah. Jared says you want to notice that much difference on Wi-Fi these days, especially a 
if you have a good route. Exactly right. Exactly right. That's that's exactly what I was just saying. For most people, um, yeah, like you'd be surprised. Like the person was like, "Yeah, Wi-Fi is terrible." You'd be surprised just how many people that's their only option, eh? What's up? Ah! I don't think you really want to see that one. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's all right. Okay, so we'll get our get our memory in here. I don't think I mentioned the the speed and latency. This is a 5600 CL36 kit. So these are one of the better value kits that you can get right now. DDR5 RAM has come down a bit in price, but it is still um, much more expensive than DDR4. And um, yeah, to, especially if you want to get RAM that's sort of like a lot faster than DDR4 and a lot, you know, a bit of a, a, bit of a more noticeable performance increase. You're going to pay a lot more for that right now so that's just where we're at yeah yeah that'll work fine for gaming and stuff like that however try and um try and run cinebench r23 with a stock configuration and watch it go straight to 100 degrees that's just how they are out of the box. What's up? Oh, Bruce Highway. They're actually talking about a second one. Oh, they're going to build a second one, are they? Oh, good for them. A fucking second one. Yeah, like like um, what Route Five was meant to be in Brisbane, mm. you know, fucking what what what's the road called? Um, starts at Tawong there. Uh, <laughs> I can see it. Becomes <laughs> like, becomes like, um, Eaton's Crossing Road and all that. Mm. Route Five it runs through the north side. That was meant to be a highway. On the original city plan but then they like they botched it and they turned the north side into they what it is yeah it goes through a nogra yeah, albany cool. creek and comes out onto the start of the bruce highway yeah, richard says double trouble <laughs> pretty much yep Yeah. So we've got our LGA seventeen hundred socket cooler there. And then out of the bag here, just like the other night, it's the same sort of cooler. So we've got the same kind of mounting hardware, we've got the same RGB configuration and because I've got one spare here and they only work with the included controller I'm going to chuck in an extra RGB fan there what I'm building and how many and, yeah how, how you know how how, how, how much um, how much effort I want to go into explaining everything so normally normally when you build live building as fast as possible 
generally makes for worse content because I'll just be sitting there sort of concentrating on what I'm doing. So we got to put on our own brackets here, whether it's Intel or AMD. That's probably the most fiddly part of this cooler. nothing really you have to consider here with the Intel one, they're symmetrical and it's a square base. So you don't even have to think about which way it goes. If it fits, it fits. We've also got pre-applied thermal compound here on this one as well. So no need to apply any additional thermal paste. Tim? Yeah. Daniel says we are watching Tim. My son is here very excited about his computer building. Oh yeah, I mean this is this is a weapon man, like I'm just trying to like work out in my head how much more powerful this was compared to my first computer when I was a kid. Your son's probably peeling out his skin right now. Yeah, I'd say so. Oh no, I would be. My first computer was a potato sack compared to this. Oh yeah. They were all potato sacks. <laughs> wanted to get those cables routed um, discreetly around the base of the cooler. Sometimes when you do that you've got to be very careful not to pin down the cooler on top of your cables. It's generally not the best way of doing things. Generally not advised? Nah, generally, gen generally avoid that kind of shit if possible. But yeah, my first computer was the very first Intel Celeron that there was. My first computer, it didn't even have it didn't even have audio properly.
Yeah, so I had to install a sound card in my first PC to enable audio. Well, that's what got me started with PCs, I think. This would have been this would have been a decent a decent amount because it's got the i9. Always got to consider that. So the cooler will sit like this with the cables and the connectors on the back of the fans at the back. So it'll sort of be like, like this in the case. And then what we've got to do is we've got to connect, we've got to connect this cable here up with, where's the rest of it? Yeah. we can we can cheat a little because we can use this extension cable if we need and then this one this one here we'll have to um, this will be chained in the back there Basically, you just plug that in like that, and as I showed people last night, this is the other end of it. So you got SATA power. You got the connector that goes to our chain, and then you've got the addressable fan and RGB cable that go to the motherboard. So really, pretty pretty simple, and then you can use the extension cable on this to make it a little bit longer. There we go. And it's actually a pretty neat, a pretty neat kind of setup once it once it's all hooked up and ready to go. So I haven't heard a word from from Keith, which is which is generally really good because that means he's had no problems. Oh, that was last time. No, not before. Yeah, not before. Last night's is the yeah, the yeah, hard tube, yeah. the hard tube one. We might be in for a bit of a delay with that one as well because yeah, can't we can't find any for plugs for it. The customer wasn't anticipating to need to need that many plugs, but the pump, the sorry, the reservoir, so it needs it needs one plug for the main area that you fill the reservoir up from, and then it's got it's got a um, it's got a draining valve that's at the bottom of the cooler and so you need to have a plug in that as well and then you also need another plug because it's got dual outputs at the bottom so it's got two pipes that come out of, out of it 
and we're only going to be because we're just doing the the CPU. We're we're definitely we definitely only have um, fluid flowing in one direction. We've only got one. Um, we've only got one inlet and one outlet on the CPU block. So we're literally only using the one pipe. We're only doing the the single. So we need another another um, plug to plug that one up as well. So that's a total of three plugs that we that we really really need to to do it because while I can I can go and get the tubing all sorted and bent into shape um, I won't be able to fill it until we get plugs for it and if everyone's out of stock locally uh, let's there's not much I can do about that should have the stuff on hand yeah but it's still fairly it's still fairly niche. Not everyone, not everyone gets it. So, yeah, it's the sort of thing that I normally don't hold because it's like, what's the point of, of holding it when I can get it? You know, one hour click and collect from wholesalers and retailers here in Brisbane. So, alrighty. So that's all hooked up like that. Then our final one, hooked into our fan. Yeah. And that fan goes on on the back there. And then the only other thing we do is just connect. We just connect our radiator up to the to the chain on the other end and then we plug in here to this fan and we are sorted with this so it's it's RGB and fan cables all in one basically if you're trying to work out what the hell I'm doing Okay. Okay. So some people when they they get this case and they look at it and they see the, the single drive tray down the bottom there and then they see these four holes there they're like oh yeah I can see where two hard drives go but where does the third hard drive go so let's have a look at probably the the more um, the less obvious hard drive mounting position so to, to do anything about that you first need to come around the back here and on the bottom there's a couple of bolts. These are just regular hex screw bolts. And once you unscrew them, you can slide out the hard drive tray. Now, I should say like a little chassis, for lack of a better word. And so that's where the, the, the drawer sort of sits. Now it's relatively easy to chuck a drive in there and put it in there and there you go. But we can also mount a drive to the top of this as well. And that's what we're going to do with this one. So it's going to leave this top drive position free and it will also leave this, this drawer here completely free as well. So if you're looking for a case that supports, you know, two different drives, or sorry, three different three and a half inch drives, plus two and a half inch drives, then really look no further. We've already found the perfect um, PC for you, basically. Um... I was just 
shears in the drawer there to make sure I don't do this around the wrong way. So one thing about hard drives as opposed to SSDs is you can you can really you can really damage a drive by not having it screwed in properly. So make sure that you always always use all of the mounting holes that are available to you. Should be a bare minimum of four, like what we've used here at the bottom. Okay, there we go. So we've got the, the drive mounted in arguably the, the more difficult position to mount your drive in. And now I can go ahead and put back that box of spare stuff right there. Like a bit of a, you know, worst possible birthday present ever. <laughs> Nah, no, it's good to have some spare random bolts and shit like that with PCs. I mean, they're meant to be user, it's meant to be user upgradable and stuff. But the problem is, you know, where do you, where do you get the knowledge of how to do this if you don't like have a dad that knows how to do it and he's like showing you how to build PCs yourself? Like, yeah. Hey, Nick, how you going? Good to have you with us. Hugh says hello. Hey, Hugh, how you going? Good to have you here. So yeah, we're we're working on an Antec D eight hundred, sorry, D seven hundred flux case. Same, ca it's the same case. It just has a different front panel. This is my favorite one out of the Antec ones. I like the wave. You like the you like the seven hundred pattern, hey? Yes. Then there's the super high airflow 600 with just the plastic panel and the open side. Yeah, that one's pretty cool too. That's that's. I mean, they're all they're all good. They're all good. I I, I like yeah. them. I like yeah. them because I can show the I can show these cases to the average person who wants to get a good PC that looks cool and everything doesn't really doesn't really know what what they're um what they want exactly or they're not too fussed on what they want but they want something that you know is upgradable and all that and a lot of people are like oh i want room to add my drives from my other computer and when it comes to you know accommodating lots of different drives i mean i can't really go wrong with this case the only thing I do have to sort of deal with is just at the back here, all these cables and sort of just tuck them away at the back there. Oh. Tim? Yeah. 
Hey Queen Waffles, how you going? Good to have you with us. I'm baby wife. Every time every time I every time I hear your name, I'm I, I just think of um what do I think of? I don't think of Waffle House, I think of IHOP. <laughs> because I, I there was a there was a Waffle House in the parking lot near Disney World where I stayed. But I didn't go in there because I'm a I'm a real sucker for for pancakes, you know, like Canadian style with shitloads of butter and shitloads of maple syrup. Um, yeah. Remember when I thought your butter was ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're we're out we're out in the city the other night and we went to we went to a restaurant that that's open late and one of their specialties is um, is pancakes. And so I ordered, I ordered some pancakes. I hadn't had pancakes for nearly a year or so, and and it was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, give me, give me, give me the long stack, yeah, hell yeah. And Christine sees this whipped butter that's on it, and she thought it was a scoop of ice cream. It like <laughs> so she so ice she cream. grabs it oh, and put, it puts like it, ice cream. and then she was like, oh, oh, it's just pure whipped butter. It's like, yeah, yes it is, yes, yes it is. All this right. Nice tasting. Oh, it's it's really nice. It's whipped <laughs> butter with like plenty of salt in it and stuff like that. It's nice. But yeah. So whenever I see your name, Queen Waffles, I'm just like, ah, I hope. <laughs> maybe maybe I get maybe I get some maybe I get a side of bacon and eggs to go with my pancakes. That's 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 like American <laughs> style, right? I say, does, does that Star Spangled Banner yet wave? <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure it's not. Who cares? <laughs> YOLO, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's a lot more expensive, right? Yeah. Like $200. Oh, not that, not quite that much. But yeah, I mean, it's like, mm, that's fine, but it's, it's more expensive. So for the sort of person that yeah, is sort of generally after a mid-range case. It's hard to it's hard to recommend a brand that's you know trying to do the premium thing because it's like if I could save them thirty bucks on the case or forty bucks on the case, then that's like extra storage or, or something else that they might be lacking a little bit of. So it's hard to it's hard to recommend. Um, like a Leon Lee Land Cool, unless someone goes, yeah, I want the Land Cool, love it, sort of thing. It's like, yeah, sweet, no worries. I mean, it is a cool case. Yeah, I've built in it before and stuff like that, but yeah, I don't work for Leon Lee, so it's never, I'll, I'll never. No, I don't work for Antec, but Antec have just, you know, they're at the right, they're at the right position there with what they're offering that it's impressed me enough to sort of recommend that. Yeah. I mean, there's good value stuff as well. There's the Silverstone, Silverstone as well, they're good value. But yeah, that's the thing. Don't cut, Don't cut myself, no promises. He was, he ate 
need a whole bag of raisins, which are not good for dog owners, and then he was given some medication to make him throw up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I ate them because they were tasty. <laughs> Fucking dogs. Okay, so now we've got all that sort of connected. You can screw in this back fan. So a bit of a pro tip here with this case, you do need to drop down the back fan that's installed stock when you install a 360 millimeter radiator because it will get in the way when you're mounting your radiator in the case. Tim. Yeah. Josh says he saw his Leon Lee DL11XL ROM case for 200 PLE last year. Sales for two days. Needless to say, I ordered two. They still retail for three thirty, roughly. Yeah. Yep. People pay big money for rog. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, yeah. Taxes. You're close to one K subs. Nice. Yes, yes, I'm getting. I'm getting very, very close to one K subs. So what? yeah, if you haven't, if you haven't, please, please, please help me get to one K subs. That would be that would be awesome. Yes. Because if you don't know, if, if you're not if you're not in YouTube land, hitting hitting 1K subs plus some other metrics as well. But for me, the thing that holds me back is the is the lack of 1K subs. That's the start of where you can like start earning money from YouTube. And you, you're also favoured by YouTube's algorithm, if that makes sense. So more people will see my channel and stuff if if I get to one one K subs. What's up? In Daintree Village, where we stayed when we went to the Daintree Rainforest, they've had five hundred and twenty three mil. Five hundred and twenty three mil at mm. the up at Daintree. Yeah, yeah okay. You get that right. Yeah. Oh, they're having like a little bit of monsoon rain going on up there. I'm not even, it's just pretty bad. As we step on this highway again. <laughs> Remember when we like kind of got airborne? That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's the one cable here from one of our fans. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Greatly appreciated. 
Yes, so yeah, that's the thing. Once you get to 1,000 subscribers, you're just favoured a bit more by YouTube's algorithm. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. George says 83 subs to go in favourite places. I'm subbed to you on like all of my channels. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I hear stuff here. The second channel. Very nice. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, things are starting to come along here. We've got all of our RGB chained up through that. So we can actually hook the addressable cable up to our RGB and fan controller that's pre-installed. So that's one good thing about, about this is you get a six device RGB and fan controller built into the case so it's not like it's not like um it's not like you're missing out on much with this it really does have it all oh, oh wow okay so we do get a nice little little carry bag here with our, with our power supply. And this is the little I don't know if that's even little low. bag that it sort of sits in because it's you know it's nice and premium. Well this this is this is the top level of quality that you can get a power supply. Yes, 80 plus gold, it's not a platinum or something like that, but the 80 plus rating is not a guide to quality. The Pretty much your guide to quality is whether or not the manufacturer is willing to stand by it and put a 10 year warranty on it. That's how you know that you're getting the top quality inside. Now, you can pay for more efficiency, that's fine. But you can't you can't necessarily pay for more quality. By the time you get up to a top efficiency power supply, they're pretty much all the best quality, right? So you know you can't if you want to make a power supply that's 80 plus platinum, you pretty much can't use anything but the best quality capacitors and everything inside your power supply has to be top notch if not you won't hit the metrics for for platinum but when it comes to 80 plus gold power supplies there's a lot more variance in the in the quality but if you see that a manufacturer is willing to put 10 years on on it and replace your power supply if it dies yeah that's that like from a from a product development and marketing sales perspective, right? It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, but it with a com with that commercial kind of perspective on it, a ten year warranty could completely destroy all profitability from a, a range of products. So they can't they can't get away with putting ten year warranty on things just for no for no particular reason, right? Okay. And so this one here, this is the cable in question. This is our uh, 12 plus four pin connector. So one end goes into the power supply and <gasps> one end goes into our graphics card. Somebody has sent you some stars. It's the first time somebody sent the stars. Oh, wow, cool. That's cool. cool. That's cool. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you very much. So this is the cable we don't need, PCIe cable. We do need a CPU. We don't need a Molex. We do need a SATA. We don't need a PCIe. We don't need a second SATA. We don't need a third SATA. We don't need a Molex to floppy adapter, but Aww. we do need another CPU power cable. But so. What no floppy drive or device that uses the floppy drive connector. So, sorry about that. So, I'll put all the spare cables and bits and pieces into your nice little sample bag there for buying a good power supply. It's like a 
Yeah, we're going to go on to the Echo. I know, right? <laughs> I know. And yeah, one thing with the with where I put the SSD on the motherboard, it leaves the other three slots nice and easily accessible for you. So if you want to um, if you want to upgrade, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. You could even do eight fifty if you wanted to. Generally, you'd go, you'd go a thousand. Um, just if you're going to spend forty ninety money, the power supply is not exactly the biggest expense there, so you may as well just spend that little bit extra on the power supply. Then you can be happy. I mean, you'll probably end up getting a good unit with a 10 year warranty like we've got here. And then this can potentially be the only power supply you need for the next 10 years. Mm. Good for your second and third build in that period, depending on what sort of person you are, right? And that's the thing to consider as well. You know, you're buying, we, we're gonna be using computers. I don't think anyone's arguing about the fact that we're still gonna have computers and we're still going to use computers in 10 years time the technology will get you know will change but we're still in it we're still going to have computers we're still going to use computers there's going to be more different sorts of computers and they're going to be more essential than they've ever been to our day-to-day -day life well i think that's i think that's part of the idea with pc is that we want to we want to sort of allow people to completely personalize their PC. So if I could get like a fluoro orange case, I, I would spend so much money on that. Yeah, but maybe <laughs> maybe what maybe what we do for you is we we go and we go and work out how we can go about turning any case into fluoro orange oh, with a really good paint job. Yeah, and you buy metal paint. Like paint that's made from metal. Yeah. But yeah, we definitely, on the PC end of things, definitely want to allow for the end user to pretty much do whatever the hell they want. That's what PC's always been about. It's, it's always been about freedom and not being, you know, forced into a particular ecosystem. Not that certain PC brands will sort of try the same stuff. Let's try the same tactics. I'm looking at you, Apple. But, essentially, what we're talking about is freedom to do whatever you want, freedom to make your PC look however you want, and have whatever features that you desire. And, you know, for it to be, for it to be not like, not like Apple where you've got to like, you know, you pay extra money for like some some extra some extra features but it's basically the the same the same fundamental product if that makes sense like they do they do all sorts of they, they use all sorts of tactics to kind of like elevate themselves as if oh yeah we just make everything super exclusive and then people will think we're so different and we're so far ahead and we're so exclusive that we're just gonna go ahead and throw rationality out the door and we'll just go and buy into this brand because it's perceived to be better it's just like it's just like people right now with with tesla although they're probably at the moment with tesla people are still thinking that their full self-driving thing's gonna like become a thing soon and owning a tesla is gonna like generate you like thirty thousand dollars a year revenue from the full self-driving and the ability to use to basically send your car off at night to, to be a cab. <laughs> My dad had some, has some funny thoughts about that. My dad used to own a cab back in the day. So, Sorry, what? 
Oh, I was just saying my dad used to own a cab back in the day. Yes, yes. And, and, um... He sold it at the right time. <laughs> We've had that conversation as well. But, um, yeah, he was just like, do you know how much of, like, even when I'm in the car and I'm, I'm being, um, you know, conscious of who I'm letting in the car, even when I do that, I still end up with dickheads vomiting all over the cab and having to fucking go and clean it and shit like that. So he's like, look, it, whether they make this a thing or not, it's definitely not going to just generate you money and be as, like, completely um, inconsequential to your life for making that money as what you think because people are going to, like, trash the fuck out of your car and then what, it's, you're going to go to work the next day with like some vomit on the seat next to you? Is that what you want? You want to have your car just go out and let some computer program decide which patrons that, that it's going to go and pick up just because they're the, they're the, they were the next one in, in, the, in the digital queue? I, I don't think so. There's still a lot of problems with that idea that they've sold to people, but hey, you know, it's not, it's not a popular opinion. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. Hey man, how you going? Good to have you with us. Alright, so we've got two CPU power connectors. Okay, and so for your CPU cable, quite like we like what we did around here, you can kind of just tuck the cable around the lip of the case there, and that will hold it in place without any cable ties or any stuffing around there. And so now we're just left with our motherboard, graphics card, and all of our other peripheral devices, etc. So these two here are from our RGB and fan controller, so they've got to go to the motherboard. Um, we'll have to connect this particular fan header directly to the motherboard, but this RGB header here, this should just be right to plug into our RGB and fan controller, and this is the sync cable for the, the fans, etc., on our cooler and uh, AIO cooler. So I'm pretty sure. I know.
it's very tight there with that power supply, but we made it. So those two at the bottom are our fans in the case and up here connected to the CPU fan header is our pump. So I had one customer concerned that there was a problem with the um, with the with the with the pump on his computer but there was nothing wrong with it. It was just the pump was plugged into the CPU header not the pump header. And it's no difference, it's just a fan header with a different name. So it doesn't matter which one that you use, but he thought his pump was dead because of that. I'm like, no, 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 no. Everything's fine. There's no problem there at all. It is literally just just the um just the the, the sorry, what are you talking about? Oh no. Dr. Attack wants to know if you like LCT. If I like Aussie T. No, LTT. LTT, Linus Tech Tips. Yeah, Linus is Linus is okay. I remember watching him like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely the most famous tech YouTuber. Yeah. I remember seeing some of his people that he's got now like that do their own videos through his channel. I remember when they got the first started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michael like, oh, Jeebus, you've grown up. Oh no, he's gotten married and now he's got kids. It's, it's, it's kinda weird. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we we know them. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Okay, so we've got a couple of choices here for our USB 3 and I think we use the one up here with our CPU power connector, sorry motherboard power connector I should say. <laughs> I thought she was laughing at me then. No, <laughs> Lord of the Rings and then Lord of the Rings and Legolas has a sniper rifle. <laughs> Be, it'd definitely be open, over in one third of the time. <laughs> it's good meme, yes. Okay, so that's hooked up, we've got our USB 3, I might want to chuck a few more bolts into our motherboard at this stage, we, d we didn't even have anything to d run discreetly behind the motherboard, so we should have had all the bolts in already.
That's wrong. Right. There's somebody's built Toby, Charmander, um, Pikachu. Out of Lego. Yes. Very nice. I want to know how many pieces they used. <laughs> Very good. So now we just have this one cable here. And so I believe the maximum amount of power that they can push over these connectors is 600 watts. This is a 450 watt cable that we've got here, which is going to be absolutely plenty of juice for our RTX 3070. But still, it's quite a lot of juice out of that out of that one little cable, right? Getting a dopamine rush? Yes, actually. <laughs> I haven't done this in years. <laughs> oh, ooh, he's got two hollows in his Oh, that's cool. Ooh, Alrighty, so there's our adapter. Oh. We don't need that. Here it is. And I'm gonna go up to the oh. camera. I'm gonna go off the camera for a second. Just to show people something. So people are saying all oh, graphics cards are getting huge, man, they're massive these days. The the actual graphics card, the, the printed circuit board or the PCB, it goes up to there. And then all of that there at the it's end just is just extra cooler. So the graphics cards themselves aren't really that much bigger than normal. It's just the amount of cooling that they need to strap to them. So if you're thinking, wow, they're just massive these days, or who knows what, usually tech gets smaller, right? Alrighty, 
Well, that is our that is our PC. So this this fan here is an optional reverse fan because the back of our case actually has a vent on it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this will definitely be a nice one. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. So Brad's the one with the, the, the PC to diagnose <laughs> after this. Oh, I think he did a fuck up. <laughs> Daniel says actually 4070 Ti, not 3070. Oh, did I say 3070? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still partially living in the 30 series generation. I know what I'm talking about. 3070 wouldn't even take this power adapter. There's a fluffy mouth down there. He's pulling on that on that blanket. Buddy, he's looking at me like what? Meow. Meow. Alrighty, so we'll chuck some extra stuff in here. There is this side mount, sorry, side? this um, support bracket for it. You don't really need that. Chuck in some SATA cables, Wi-Fi antennas. Graphics card protector. Have you already fed him? He had one earlier. Okay, um... Because it's not really necessary, 
Um, people think that, I don't know, people think that if they don't install it that their card's going to bend and stuff and, ugh. It's not the card that bends. It's not the card that bends, it's just the bracket at the back. And if you don't plug the cable, if you plug the cable in from above, you're pulling, you're giving it a bit more support anyway, so you don't need to. If we put the bracket in place, it just makes it harder to access everything else in the PC. I, uh, I hate installing them because it's just harder to, it's harder to access everything below the card, if that makes sense. And because they're not, they're really not necessary. Um, I don't bother with them unless I'm requested by the customer specifically. But I always send it off with them if they want to install it themselves. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely not someone that, um, yeah, freaks out about that because, <laughs> yeah, it's not the it's not the card itself that bends. It's the the bracket at the back that the the bolts are bolted into. One thing I will do while I'm here is I will set up the fans so I can tell right now it hasn't automatically worked out what's connected to it so for for our CPU there we go it's actually showing something So our CPU is actually our pump on the radiator. So we actually want that up at full speed. Now our other two fan headers here. So we want to activate smart fan over DC for one and smart fan over PWM for the other. Does that look right? Let's make sure I've definitely got it would go four five, I'm pretty sure. Yes. We do have them right and you might be able to hear that the fans have, have dropped down now that they're configured correctly. Our pumps up at full speed, and our CPU core temperature just dropped down quite considerably. Okay, so we've enabled XMP and all that good stuff. So yeah, like I was saying, with the with the graphics card support brackets, they are an optional thing. You don't have to add them. My advice to people in general is to do your cables in such a way that they support your card a little bit, even just a little bit. It's all it takes. And then if if you do notice it's sort of looking like it's on a bit of a sag there, I guarantee that ninety percent of it is going to be in that back bracket. And if you just undo those two bolts, un un take, unplug your, your graphics card and just bend that panel a little bit, you'll solve all of your sagging problems. I would only worry about it with the absolute heaviest of heavy cards. And when I say heavy, I mean heavy. Oh, 
there is one thing I forgot to hook up and that is our hard drive forgot all about our hard drive Unfortunately, that's no big deal. See, we're actually just hoping that the that the hard drive would work just randomly. just randomly turn on by itself. That's what we were hoping for. Yeah. Hey Matthew, how you going? Good to have you with us. All right, now our hard drive's actually connected. So we're not going to recognize the internet. Okay. So this is one of the things that can happen when you build your PC is you might get a motherboard and you won't have the correct network drivers installed. Now, sometimes you know, you might be able to access stuff by, um, by a CD, but many people don't even have a CD drive anymore, and a lot of the motherboards aren't even coming with a CD drive included anymore. Sorry, a CD disc. So you have to use the internet. 
So I've got I've got a little very still decent like Wi-Fi five, um, but very generic kind of Wi-Fi dongle, and so that's my solution to um, turning on a PC and not having network drivers to get things started. So I'll just plug in my Wi-Fi dongle there and I'll gain an internet connection just like we've done there. So if I didn't have my little Wi-Fi dongle for that, we would be we would be at an impasse and I'd be stuck with downloading the driver on another computer and putting it on a USB and then bringing it over and installing the network drivers. Okay, so we've got that going on. So we've got an MSI motherboard and graphics card. So we'll need MSI Center. So if anyone if anyone watching this is using Dragon Center, go and uninstall Dragon Center right now. Go to the Windows Store and download and install MSI Center. It's it's an improved version of it and it doesn't have all the bugs. Likewise, if you got rid of Dragon Center because it had some sort of problem, and but you'd rather you'd like to have that utility back, um, MSI Center is the improved version. So download it and get amongst it. Cinebench. Don't need Razor drivers for myself. It's just my mouse that I've got plugged into it. We can launch MSI Center. You do actually have to scroll down before you click that. Um, not sh we should. I mean, it should get our graphics driver, but I will go ahead and install the. 40, 70 specific drivers because we were having some problems with that at first. down some custom desktop icons so we don't make a mess of the place. So we'll install Crystal Disk Info and Disk Mark. These are important apps that allow you to test the speed and the health of your storage devices. So you'll definitely want to um, definitely want to make sure they're all right. It's handy to have an app that will you know tell you the the health of your hard drives when you connect them. Because sometimes a hard drive can last a, a very long time, to say the least.
minus Okay, so we're nearly done here. We're nearly there. Okay, that's all looking good. Okay, so now we can set up our hard drive while the rest of this is doing its thing. There we go. There's one terabyte SSD, one terabyte hard drive.
Okay. Well, MSI Afterburn is probably going to have to be reinstalled. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um... advanced view, go into advanced tuning and where are we? We want to drop this down. This is our undervolt profile here for, for our 12900K. Yeah. Ten eighty Ti. Um no, not for a while. That's that's going back a few years. I think the last one I built was would have been a second hand one. Hey Emily, how you going? Good to have you with us. Okay, so I've saved a profile in there for it. Tim. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I I totally I totally hear you. I was so tired at the start of this. I was I was like, oh, do I have to do this? But I do. I have to work. I have to I have to earn a living. Earning a bloody living. <laughs> yeah. Alright, 
So we're just setting up what stats we want to see in the on-screen display. Alrighty, so at first we'll run Heaven on high with no anti-aliasing. And this is at 1080p because this is what my capture card runs at. So I don't even think it's I don't even think it's used over 300 watts. The graphics card it just makes a mockery of this benchmark.
Alrighty, so that was Heaven there on high with no anti-aliasing. Next we'll do Valley, but we'll do this on Ultra with max anti-aliasing. That's also a more demanding benchmark. Okay, so that was Valley there on Ultra with Max Anti-Aliasing. Then the final one is our 4K benchmark.
Okay. Okay, so it was obviously not tracking our temperatures there. That's okay. Go ahead and start the stress test. We can get on to diagnosing the next PC. set this up for a 90 minute run Next PC. So this is the one that's been doing a bit of weird shit. Let me just find out in advance if there's a password on this. Oh yes, there is. Very good. Okay. So, let's work out what is the miss with this. What have we got here? We've got a B85M-E45 motherboard. So, this is a much older board, DDR3 RAM. Um, and in this box, we've got a GTX 1070, it looks like. So, basically what's happening with this one, it's showing some really weird symptoms. Oh, dinner, dinner at the desk. So it's showing some really weird symptoms when it's trying to run games and like Heaven Benchmark, for example. So, I don't know, I don't know exactly what's up with this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to diagnose it and um, see what happens, I guess. But we'll start by turning it on and just seeing what we see.
Oh no, we're booting up a hard drive. That's not good. Don't mind me as I clog my arteries with a delicious bacon and tomato sauce sandwich. We got another Sims player, babe. A Sims player. Okay, eventually it'll it'll start doing its thing. So we we're getting some very weird symptoms when running heaven. And so I've watched a few videos from, from this customer. And it looked like there was something wrong with the graphics card. But then the graphics card's tested on another computer and apparently is fine. We got a GT730 in there at the moment. All right, it seems to be running completely fine. Okay. Well, let me take my plate back. tested on my test bench I want to verify that there's definitely no problem with the graphics card because as for there being a problem with the motherboard then we if it was something to do with the motherboard when running graphics when the graphics card's running graphics or whatever. We'd be seeing it now with this card, but I mean, other than it running slow, it's not really, not really causing any problems. Plug that in there. We need 
eight pins of pure power. That's right, pure power. drop off that we can just let that one just keep running there in the background with nothing plugged into it other than a power cable okay so our original graphics card let's see what this does so the thing about PC repair and troubleshooting a PC and and all that is you kind of got to have like another PC there ready to go to test everything on. You need to have parts that are, you know, compatible with each other. And that's half the battle. So, give it a second to find the correct driver. There we go, GTX 1070. So heaven. And the card instantly crashes. Look at that artifacting. And it's crashed. So that will be the graphics card. That's the that's the symptoms that we saw before. So once again, try it in Valley. So I can pretty much rule out the motherboard and RAM in the original computer there when we're seeing shit like this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're artifacting and, and crashing pretty quickly. So these problems just get worse and worse and worse the more times you try and try it. And if you're, if you just give it a quick, a quick assessment and just go, oh yep, it posts, it's okay. Um, you probably won't find these sort of problems. And we can run a run superposition here again just for shits and giggles, just to confirm that she's definitely she's definitely fucked. Now from here you can spend the time to pull the graphics card apart. You can try putting new thermal pads on it, new lot of thermal paste etc etc Seems to have lasted the longest here running DirectX 12. But based on what I saw just before, I'm not very confident. But hey, look at this, it is running. pretty strange it's working here running a DirectX 12 but it's not liking in DX11 
And just to confirm that. And now, and now it's going to work, is it? That's very strange. And now it's working fine. Okay. Jesus. And we seem to be okay now. That is very strange, but we saw what it was doing there at first. Maybe. <laughs> wonder if it's some sort of physical problem that only manifests itself when the card's cold. That could be what we're looking at here. So this is the, the Strix. So GDX 1070 Strix. Oh, I don't have any internet. Oh, now look at this. Uh, <laughs> Holy motherfucker. Bloody hell.
don't know, this is very, very strange. Are you serious? It's a raw file. Win raw. Remember that? Okay, so no funny BIOS on there or anything. It's just like completely fucked. It's just let's just install this just to, just to doubly make sure it's not some weird driver issue but I mean nothing about nothing about this display is normal Now I'm still leaning towards this, this card's fucked. It's just very, very strange symptoms. But yeah, that's the best way of ruling things out is when we plug it into a new system and this is the problem. So uh, the system here seems like it's it's just doing its thing, it's fine. No problems there at all. Have a look at that. There we go, that brought back the desktop at least. So, yeah. Yeah, well that that's what we're that's what we're on now. We're on my test bench here at the moment. And it's doing the same sort of weird shit.
Yeah. Anthony wants to know, he has a 1090 K and a, and a Z590 on a Z390, but he wants to run 3 and a, does he have to upgrade everything? Um, well, look, with 10th with Gen Intel, you, you'll just have PCIe 3. So a recommended upgrade would be PCIe 4, the same generation as the card. You can still run a 4080 um, with a 10900K, but yeah, like I said, with the with the um, with the difference in PCIe generation, you get a little bit more performance and a better experience with it if you upgraded the motherboard as well. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, all I know is that, I mean, you saw it, you saw it before, right? What it was doing. I'm assuming this is the kind of stuff that was happening to you on yours. Yeah, but in different cards, though. Yeah. 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 He says, you know, recommends upgrading to 1390K in your motherboard DDR5. But I'm trying to see if I can get away with it for now at least. And Brad was saying, what can we do now? Okay, so we've crashed, crashing again there. We've definitely got the latest drivers on. It's just very, it's very inconsistent. That's, that's what's pretty weird about it. Like I said, normally things get worse. They don't get better. I mean, scroll back, you should see some of the funky shit it was doing before. Just in Windows, swapping between things. See, what we're looking at now is, is Telltale, like, graphics card problem. Why has he had two different cards doing the same thing? I can't explain it unless he's got two different cards that have the same sort of problem. Because that's what happened. Well, I mean, there's, there's another card in there now. Is that not the other card we're talking about? Yeah, so... Basically, this thing's this thing's fucked, man. Yep. Yeah. She's fucked. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, yeah, I don't think, I don't think your problem 
I don't think your problem had anything to do with your motherboard or RAM or anything like that because now that we're on my test bench I know that this is not a problem that I experience with other cards on this on this test bench so I know that I know that mine's not not doing this naturally so everything else that this is plugged into is is definitely all good we know we've definitely got a problem with this with this card and so what we can do let's just plug back into this other PC which was just running heaven but it's fucked up from taking the cables out which can happen it's the resolution that it's on but we can go ahead and turn this one off I can shut down my test bench as well and what we're going to do now is we're going to plug we're going to swap the graphics cards over And so what we're going to do here, we're swapping the graphics cards over, and the reason is, for for the sake of being sure of what our problem is, we really need to recreate the same problem with with our graphics card in the other PC, and we should be able to move over this working graphics card here to another PC and it'd be completely fine. So we were seeing all the funky stuff on mine. So let's move this GT730 over here. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 don't. You don't have to, you don't have to explain anything to me, man. I have the I have like the the worst but better version of what you've got right here, the GT710 X1 interface, but with four HDMI outputs. Okay, where are we? Now PCIe cable. There and let's just put Okay, so first, let's make sure that I'm not full of shit and that my PC, my test bench, isn't the cause of what we were seeing just then. So we'll go back over to this one, we'll boot up, and we'll run some benchmarks again and shouldn't get any of the same behaviour. So GT730 here, very very similar to the GT710 that is usually plugged in down the bottom there. So our 
adjusting to the correct graphics card driver. Oh look, Windows wants me to do stuff. This is a test bench, guys. I, I don't need I don't need to finish setting up my PC. Alrighty. <laughs> this might look terrible, but this is exactly what we would expect with this card running the settings that it's running. Alright, so let's turn it right down here. That looks a bit better. About three and a half times the speed. Yeah. What is the price of a uh, Oh, well, like a new one, um, eight gigabyte, like, that's not necessarily the, the metric that you want to stick to, but like, yeah, the cheapest would be probably the, the RX 6600, it's coming in just over 300. That would probably be your cheapest option. It'd be about the same as a 1070 as well. More or less. It's actually weird watching this benchmark on low. Because I normally run it on high settings. Because it looks really good. So yeah, I mean, other than it be, other than it being a GT seven thirty, it's running completely fine. We're not seeing any of the strange artifacting and stuff that was that was going on before. Oh, you can get you can get a um you can get a twelve gigabyte RTX thirty sixty for that. You get the Galax one. 500 bucks. Yep. Alright. Well, look, I'm, I'm pretty confident now. And so, if I shut down the test bench, go back over to our first PC, and it'll take a little while to boot up because it's just got a, um, it's just got a hard drive. Do do you do you want an SSD? Like things would things would boot up quicker for you and shit if you had an SSD. I don't recommend anyone in this day and age try the um like running Windows off a hard drive. I would advise against that where possible.
Very nice. Please tell me you didn't buy this at, at first when you bought a PC hoping to game on it. Some people do that. It happens. Yeah, because right now it's it's real slow. It's not because it's a, uh, it's not because it's like got DDR three or something like that. It's it's basically slow because it's reading everything off the hard drive. Oh, that hard drive tray isn't even. It's got the wrong thread pitch screw in it, so it wasn't actually bolted down. Swap that over as well while I'm at it. These are the little things, right? And see, as you can see here in Task Manager, CPUs barely being used, memories barely being used. We're being held back here by our, our disk, it's our hard drive. We can also check the, the health status of our hard drive as well. Crystal disk info. Don't worry, this is a very light app. Ironically, it has to be installed onto the hard drive. Show me blue. Very good. Health status blue. It is definitely an older drive. Look at that. 31,979 hours in operation. How many days is that? 31,000. 979 divided by 24 is 1,300 
and so divided by 365 it is 3.65 years on So, yeah, it's about right. Got a few pop-ups there of some of that spammy sort of stuff. See, we we're not we're not seeing any Nvidia drivers here though. But this is really weird, look, it says GPU there, and it's not showing up here. Okay. Never a good sign. doing this again look at this Okay, so this is definitely, yeah, a big part of the why it's so slow here is because we're on a hard drive.
it'll get there eventually and once again it's it's pretty much all coming from our disk it's not even showing up full usage there it's just 50 percent but over here it is Bloody hell, this is a very, very slow install. What CPU is this? It's an i7-4790. I mean, that's not bad. It was good back in the day. Four cores, eight threads. It's equivalent of like a 10th gen i3 or so. Okay. There we go. Now we're seeing, now we're actually seeing our GTX 1070 there. Okay, so now we've definitely got the right drivers on. Yep. So we should be seeing weird artifacting and eventually crash. However, maybe not, maybe not at first. Because it's, oh. Oh, this is definitely, definitely escalating, isn't it? try it again but yeah this is I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty much convinced as I was when I first saw the video that this is a graphics card problem bum bum
Yep, this graphics card is is ready to to move on to its second life in the e-waste pile where it will be stripped down and recycled. So yes, there you have it. That took a little while, but I think it's pretty safe to say at this stage, we have a bad graphics card. We put in a new graphics card and we're not gonna have any of those problems anymore. Because if it was anything to do with the motherboard, RAM or CPU on this, comp on this computer, then why, when I plugged it into the test bench, did it do the exact same shit? that that screams that there's something wrong with the the actual card i did have a quick look and see if i could update the bios on the card um sometimes that can solve random problems because people put custom bioses on them to try do things and sometimes they get fucked up um sometimes you can correct it sometimes you can't i think this card's just old and has had its you know come to the end of its life G GTX 1070, I mean, you know, five plus years old at this stage, so. Alrighty, well, that's probably where we'll leave it for tonight. Oh, actually, no, 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 we'll do one more thing before, before we sign off, and that is have a look at the first PC, the one that we're stress testing. We've got a 12900K, make sure I've done the the over vaulting correct sorry I think I said over vaulting I meant under vaulting I know what I'm talking about There's my mouse. Okay, so yes, everything's all fine there. And everything is all fine here. So these have just been running continuously the whole time there. And everything's all looking good in terms of temperatures. And so you don't have to use this 160 watt profile. It only matters when you're using all of your CPU all at once while you're using all of your graphics card. So yeah, happy days. So how long has this got to go? Another half an hour. So look, I'll let it I'll let it run for another half an hour before I go to bed but I think that's gonna be it so thanks everyone for watching be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you all tomorrow in the next video